everyone, Tina Spalding, Trance Channel here for our daily Course in Miracles lesson. Uh, today we are doing lesson number 95. I am one self, united with my creator. Today's idea accurately describes you as God created you. You are one within yourself and one with him. Yours is the unity of all creation. Your perfect unity makes change in you impossible. You do not accept this, and you fail to recognize it must be so, only because you believe that you have changed yourself already. You see yourself as a ridiculous parody on God's creation, weak, vicious, ugly and sinful, miserable and beset with pain. Such is your version of yourself, a self divided into many warring parts, separate from God, and tenuously held together by its erratic and capricious maker, maker to which you pray. It does not hear your prayers, for it is deaf. It does not see the oneness in you, for it is blind. It does not understand you are the Son of God, for it is senseless and understands nothing. We will attempt today to be aware only of what can hear and see and what makes perfect sense. We will again direct our exercises towards reaching your one self, which is united with its creator. In patience and in hope, we try again today. The use of the first five minutes of every waking hour for practicing the idea for the day has special advantages at this stage of learning in which you are at present. It is difficult at this point not to allow your mind to wander if it undertakes extended practice. You have surely realized this by now. You have seen the extent of your lack of mental discipline and of your need for mind training. It is necessary that you be aware of this, for it is indeed a hindrance to your advance. Frequent but shorter practice periods have other advantages for you at this time. In addition to recognizing your difficulties with sustained attention, you must also have noticed that unless you are reminded of your purpose frequently, you tend to forget about it for long periods of time. You often fail to remember the short applications, the idea for the day, and you have not yet formed the habit of using the idea as an automatic response to temptation. Structure then is necessary for you at this time. Plan to include frequent reminders of your goal and regular attempts to reach it. Regularity in terms of time is not the ideal requirement for the most beneficial form of practice in salvation. It is advantageous, however, for those whose motivation is inconsistent and who remain heavily defended against learning. We will therefore keep the five minutes an hour practice periods for a while and urge you to omit as few as possible. Using the first five minutes of the hour will be particularly helpful since it imposes firmer structure. Do not, however, use your lapses from this schedule as an excuse not to return to it again as soon as you can. There may well be a temptation to regard the day as lost because you have already failed to do what is required this should, however, merely be recognized as what it is, a refusal to let your mistake be corrected and an unwillingness to try again. The Holy Spirit is not delayed in his teaching by your mistakes. He can be held back only by your unwillingness to let them go. Let us therefore be determined, particularly for the next week or so, to be willing to forgive ourselves for our lapses in diligence and our failures to follow the instructions for practicing the day's idea. This tolerance for weakness will enable us to overlook it rather than give it power to delay our learning. If we give it power to do this, we are regarding it as strength and are confusing strength with weakness. When you fail to comply with the requirements of this course, you have merely made a mistake. This calls for correction and for nothing else. To allow a mistake to continue is to make additional mistakes based on the first 
and reinforcing it. It is this process that must be laid aside, for it is but another way in which you would defend illusions against the truth. Let all these errors go by recognizing them for what they are. They are attempts to keep you unaware you are oneself, united with your creator, at one with every aspect of creation, and limitless in power and in peace. This is the truth, and nothing else is true. Today we will affirm this truth again and try to reach the place in you in which there is no doubt that only this is true. Begin the practice periods today with this assurance offered to your mind with all the certainty that you can give. I am oneself, united with my creator, at one with every aspect of creation, and limitless in power and in peace. Then close your eyes and tell yourself again, slowly and thoughtfully, attempting to allow the meaning of the words to sink into your mind, replacing false ideas. I am oneself. Repeat this several times and then attempt to feel the meaning that the words convey. You are oneself, united and secure in light and joy and peace. You are God's Son, oneself, with one creator and one goal, to bring awareness of this oneness to all minds, that true creation may extend the allness and the unity of God. You are oneself, complete and healed and whole, with power to lift the veil of darkness from the world and let the light in you come through to teach the world the truth about yourself. You are oneself in perfect harmony with all there is and all that there will be. You are oneself, the Holy Son of God, united with your brothers in that self, united with your Father in his will. Feel this one self in you and let it shine away all your illusions and your doubts. This is yourself, the Son of God himself, sinless as its creator, with his strength within you and his love forever yours. You are one self and it is given you to feel this self within you and to cast all your illusions out of the one mind that is this self, the holy truth in you. Do not forget today. We need your help, your little part in bringing happiness to all the world. And heaven looks to you in confidence that you will try today. Share then its surety, for it is yours. Be vigilant, do not forget today. Throughout the day, do not forget your goal. Repeat today's idea as frequently as possible and understand each time you do so, someone hears the voice of hope the stirring of the truth within his mind, the gentle rustling of the wings of peace. You own your own acknowledgement. You are oneself. United with your father is a call to all the world to be at one with you. To everyone you meet today, be sure to give the promise of today's idea and tell him this. You are oneself with me, united with our creator in this self. I honour you because of what I am and what he is who loves us both as one. And that is lesson number 95. I am one self united with my creator. Let's see what Jesus has to say today. You are blessed beings indeed. I am that one you know as Jesus and you can feel the truth in these words. You can feel the love in these words. You can feel that separation is not what you want. Love is what you want. Communion is what you want. Connection to the divine is what you want. You do not want these idols that you have been chasing that are so meaningless and hollow when you catch them. You catch an idol and then you drop it saying, this is not what I wanted. I thought it was what I wanted, but it is not what I wanted. And then the ego mind says, but look over there. Look at that one. That is so shiny. And so many people are chasing it. You should chase that one too. And three or four years later, you catch that idol, whether it be a nice car or a new body to play with or an advancement at work or a marriage or children or a bigger house. What is it that you are looking for? You are looking for peace. You are looking for joy. 
And those things are not found outside of you. You think they are. You have been taught that to buy things and expand your possessions and to marry up or slim down are the things that are going to make you happy. But truly, have they made you happy? Do they make others happy? You don't know. You see the smiling faces pasted on their social face, but are they truly happy? You hear stories of the unhappiness of the wealthy or the famous, the difficulties. We do not want you to relish those difficulties, but we want you to go to your own experience and ask yourself, have all the things that you have chased made you happy? Have they brought you peace in the darkest hours of the night? Have they brought you comfort and joy and love? No, most of them have not. Perhaps for a few weeks, a few months, a little while if you are lucky. And then they turn into something else. Then they turn into what they are. Temporary band-aids for deeper pain. We are going into the mind and changing the way you look at reality. We are changing the value system of your consciousness from what you have had marketed to you by religions, family, cultures, TV, advertisements, movies. We are changing what you have had marketed to you from commercialism and materialism and fear and death into love. You come from love, you are made from love, and you are destined to love. And that is the truth. I am that one that you know as Jesus. We will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.